There's been a lot of on-court drama at the tennis this week, as well as some unfortunate off-court incidents. A handful of spectators at the Australian Open wore T-shirts with a Z, a so-called Russian swastika symbol that represents support for the Ukraine invasion. It's part of a sharp global resurgence of anti-Semitism in the past two years and a disturbing reminder on today's International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Peter Wertheim is co-CEO of the Executive Council of Australian Jewry and he joins you this morning um, on the program. Thank you for joining us so early. Uh, good morning, Patricia. Now, your council has released a report today on anti-Semitism in Australia. It's found a staggering 42% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in the country over the past uh, two years. Just talk me through the data 42% sounds incredibly, like a, a steep increase to me. What did you find? Yes, it is uh, an alarming increase uh, from our point of view. The uh, increase over the last one year was just under 7%, which uh, sounds perhaps a, a little less um, alarming. But when you realise that this comes off the back of a 35% increase the year before, uh, it's pointing to a disturbing trend. Our organisation has published this uh, this report on anti-Semitic incidents and anti-Semitism generally in Australia for the last 30 years. And looking at the trends in particular over the last 10 years, uh, it's it's upwards. And uh, it's, uh, it's indicative of, I think, uh, a change in the traditional um, taboo against anti-Semitism. It seems to be becoming more mainstream, and uh, I would say uh, more openly and brazenly expressed uh, in in all sorts of uh, venues, sporting venues, uh, bullying at school, uh, even at universities. And this is something that we haven't uh, seen before, at least uh, uh, not as uh, consistently and as prominently. Uh, you refer to uh, taboo around doing this. Why are we losing the taboo or the practice of not behaving in this this uh, offensive manner? I, I think there are lots of uh, reasons uh, and different reasons in, in different circumstances. Certainly, as we um, get further and further away from the events of World War Two and the Holocaust, uh, people's um, instinctive awareness and understanding of those events seems to be diminishing. The, the generation, uh, my generation, which grew up in the immediate aftermath of World War II, uh, was very conscious of these things because uh, of the reports of Nazi atrocities at the Nuremberg trials and uh, the Eichmann trial and, uh, uh, and, and generally uh, the, the, the experiences of, of their parents and grandparents in fighting Nazism in World War II was very much alive in public memory and in, um, in the memory of families. And that's obviously diminishing and fading over time. So that's one explanation. Uh, but also, uh, we live in a changing world. Uh, I guess the world's always been changing, but the, the kinds of changes that we've seen uh, in recent years unsettle many people. They, uh, they, they feel threatened by those changes. And there are some people, not many, thankfully, but some people who have a, a reductionist cast of mind who want, you know, that one single simple explanation for all the complexities and changes in the world uh, and who are given to uh, an attraction to conspiracy theories. And obviously, you know, anti-Semitism is the all-purpose conspiracy theory, whether you know, it's coming from the far right of politics or the extreme left or from religious sources or... Um, uh, really, any anyone who is looking for that uh, that one single conspiracy that explains everything, so that seems to become more prevalent as well. So, um, so in terms of the stories that you collected, being able to you know pr provide this report, what what were some of the stories that you were hearing and the experiences of Jewish community members here? Oh, it can be anything from um, verbal abuse in the street when people are uh, walking to or from a synagogue and they're wearing, um, uh, like men who are wearing a Jewish head covering, being abused 
in the street. Um, it, it can also include uh, incidents very um, alarming and uh, uh, and distressing incidents of anti-Semitic bullying in schools to the point now where for the first time in in living memory there, there are actually there's actually now at least one court case that I'm aware of in which um, a state government and uh, a particular school have been sued by former students who, who were subjected to this. Um, there's uh, there's also uh, vandalising and graffiti uh, placing uh, the, the Nazi symbols on uh, by graffiti on Jewish institutions, including synagogues. Uh, I mean, look, it, it can be a, a whole variety of things. And I, I want to stress that our statistics are very conservative. Uh, we do not count as an anti-Semitic incident uh, the mere fact that somebody will, uh, will post a general anti-Semitic comment online, because if you did that, it, I mean, uh, the, the statistics would be distorted. There's, there's just so much of it out there, particularly mm. on social media, that uh, you can't count that as an incident. But we, we do nevertheless record it in a separate category as discourse, uh, and that's the, the, the reason uh, for distinguishing between the two. Can we turn to the conflict in Ukraine? What a, one of Vladimir Putin's reasons for invading the country was alleged anti-Semitism being experienced by Jews there uh, or the Nazification, as, he just, as it was described, of the country. How disturbing is it that, that false claims of anti-Semitism are being used to justify this war? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's outrageous. I mean, what Putin is doing is... Um, referring to the experience of the Second World War uh, where the Jews in the Ukraine were undoubtedly um, persecuted and, and massacred. Uh, one of the most infamous massacres did take place uh, at, a, uh, at Babi Yar in the 1940s. But what he's trying to do is to suggest that the history is repeating itself and that now the same thing is happening and he's going in there to, to liberate <laughs> the country from from these terrible uh, uh, fascist oppressors as though it, uh, we're now living in the 1940s. The reverse is true. If anyone is behaving like the, the Nazis, and I, I don't make um, any such analogy, but if anyone's exhibiting behaviour uh, that can be uh, condemned as uh, uh, imposing uh, one national will on another and mistreating other people, it's, it's, uh, it's Putin. Uh, in invading another country, taking over its territory and um, uh, oppressing its people. So uh, that really only cheapens the, the whole um, uh, seriousness of anti-Semitism because, I mean, anti-Semitism is very real. Um, it's being recorded all around the world. Uh, Australia is unfortunately not immune to it. And uh, to, to try to... Um, uh, devalue it and cheapen it by using it as a propaganda tool, as Putin is doing, uh, in a false context, is just making the, the task of dealing with real anti-Semitism uh, all the more difficult. So before I let you go, just briefly in terms of what you want done about this, uh, you, know, you can't see a sort of alarming rise like this without perhaps thinking about ways to deal with it. What would you like to see done to try and deal with this huge increase in anti-Semitism? Well, look, we've been advocating for a long time that there are, I guess, three major um, prongs to any strategy for dealing with anti-Semitism. Uh, one, of course, is leadership. We look to our political and communal leaders to um, sh show the way by setting the right example, giving the right tone, um, I mean, we had that unfortunate incident a couple of weeks ago with uh, Premier uh, as a student 20 years ago donning a Nazi uniform, but that's exactly the wrong way to deal with uh, um, anti-Semitism. That's the wrong example to be giving, the wrong message to, to get out there. And the Premier, to his credit, acknowledged that and I accept that his apology was sincere. But what we need is the opposite. We need uh, political leaders and community leaders um, stepping up, taking responsibility uh, and uh, speaking out against all forms of racism and specifically against those forms of racism which are prevalent in Australia. Anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-Asian uh, racism, 
uh, and of course uh, racism against First Nations. Um, that's that's task number one. Task number two uh, is uh, legislative reform. Uh, we think that legislation does have a role to play, although it's it's only part of the answer in combating racism in this country. We do have uh, racial vilification laws, which are a good start. We are now seeing new laws being introduced to ban the public display of Nazi symbols, which we would also support. Um, and thirdly, there's education, uh, and that's the, probably the most important part of all. And uh, it's great that the, the national curriculum has introduced uh, uh, education to acquaint Australians with our history of uh, systemic racism against First Nations, but we also need to be taught specifically about um, specific forms of racism that are prevalent in Australia, uh, other forms as well, and anti-Semitism is uh, very high on the list. Peter, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. A pleasure. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, Peter Wertheim is the co-CEO of the Executive Council of Australian Jury, and you're listening to ABC RM Breakfast, 13 minutes to 7.00.